Tensil from Tensil's Teaching Tidbits, and today we are going to be talking all things reading. We're going to go through the reading cart full of resources, talk all about that, as well as fun ways to organize these resources in the classroom. So if that sounds good to you, let's get started. All right, so I'm on the floor of my office here, kind of made a pseudo classroom area just to have fun and show organization. So starting with the cart, this cart I got at Michael's. It has all sorts of add-ons that you can use. It's actually for crafting, but I use it to hold vocabulary rings, to hold phonics flip books, and then all of the different materials inside the three tiers that we're going to be talking about today. So we'll start with this. I believe this on sale was around, I think, 59. I'm not 100% sure. And you can rearrange it so many different ways. So I thought it was really helpful, especially if you teach reading at a teacher table that has limited space or perhaps like at your easel in your carpet area where you need more space or more organization. I thought this was a great solution and it's packed. It holds a ton. So let's get started. I'm going to, sorry, my transitions are awesome. I'm going to start with sight words and fluency phrases in the phonics and sight words section. Um, I like to use these phonics and fluency phrases books. They are so motivating for students and I've used them for years. Students will work their way through their sight words book by book, level by level. Each book has 10 sets of 10. So 10 sight words followed by fluency phrases with those sight words. And once they read the list and the phrases and they're automatic, so within a second or two, I will date the bottom of completion and they can put a stamp, a sticker, color in the dot, and then move to the next level. Students keep these in their book bags and they use them and they practice them with partners and things during stations but they also take them home and they come back to school and then on Fridays is typically when I chose to just everybody's going to read me one of their lists today. So there's books one through five which would essentially be K through fifth and then the books go six through ten. So even if you have kinders who are how oh, super advanced you can give them any you can start them anywhere and they can continue working their way up. So that's how I handle sight words and fluency phrases um, during stations. And then I do the same for word families, actually all vowel patterns, starting with um, short vowels. So same thing, the students will be working on a chunk. They will read those words and then fluency phrases with those words and then color, stamp, or sticker their way through. And I have all of the different patterns. So short vowels, long vowels, vowel teams, word endings, are controlled, all of it. Um, it looks like this in my store. And I like to bind my units and things just for my own organization. But in the classroom, this would not be a, an ideal way to handle this because I can't run it through the copier and make my books. Um, so this is more just for me but I can show you what they look like. There's the one through five, then there's the six through 10, then there's the bundle of one through 10, um, and then the same thing for the word family booklets. So those will be linked in the description if that's something that might be useful. Another idea that I did for phonics, and I'm actually gonna show you this. All right, so this is what it looks like, short vowel posters. And of course I have long vowels, vowel teams, digraphs, all of that. But the next thing we do is as I'm introducing spelling, well, first of all, reviewing letter sounds, B says B, like in bear. So I have anchor charts for all of those um, letters, but then we move into our spelling patterns. So once we get through our letters, we're gonna go to short vowels. A, D says add, like in sad. Not only do I have just the anchor poster, but I have an anchor poster containing some example words. So you can choose either or, I didn't use both, it was just too much room. Um, but we would say AD says add, like in sad, and then we would chunk and read 
these Word Family books, or words, and then that can go up on your anchor wall, um, or you can keep it however you like to do, a focus wall, something like that. These were so wildly popular during station, and students were over there reading the wall, that um, I then started making these sheet protector folders. So this would just be short vowels. And so students could come over and check these out, put it in their book bag, and then go read. And for kiddos who struggle with reading or are just learning to read, they love these. They feel so successful because they remember the chunks and the chunks help them read it. So this was a huge hit once this started in my classroom. And then from there, I said, well, I'm going to capitalize on that for my babies. So I let them do tracers. And so it was a little more interactive. So it's the same posters that they're being introduced to, but now it's dotted lines. So they can take a dry erase marker and they can go over and they can say, FR says fur, like in frog. Fur, I, fry. And they can trace and read. So those are called phonics tracers. And then, just to show you how thick these are, how many posters they are, um, you're getting, so it's, this is long vowels, vowel teams, R control, all of, so all of them. But you can pick and choose. You don't have to purchase that many if you don't teach that many. So it's whatever you need, whatever will enhance that instruction and give students fun ways to practice reading because that's really what it's all about. How can I teach them reading and practicing and repeating these patterns? Now, I'm going to pause this right there and I'm back. Sorry, my legs were falling asleep like that. So, we're on the floor of my office. It's okay. So, along with the repetitive phonics practice, I'm going to show you a lifesaver, especially for RTI kids, but also just for continually repeating these patterns. We introduce a new pattern so often that our students can't always keep up and remember what they've learned. So, I made these flipping for phonics books in order to just review and repeat on the day, um, on like every single day what they had learned, and um, I made five different flip books. I just have two sets of each, but there are five different types. So let's blend, letter sounds, digraphs, short vowels, and then long vowels. So, um, oh, did I say word endings? So anyway, I'll just take this one in the middle here, and the way we do this is I can do it with my reading group, or I can have students hold their own books, but they have to go through all the patterns we've done up to that point. So, but it's quick. A I says A like in rain, and these are out of order. A Y says A like in hay. A blank E says A like in cake. So it goes through all of the patterns that you have introduced. So you kind of build these as you go, or actually I just build the whole book but I say we're gonna stop at, and I put a little post-it there. And then that way I'm not having to continually put into the books, they're already made. Um, these are just, like I said, for RTI, for kids who need to hear it and repeat it often. Um, I make all my groups do them because it's a super quick and easy warm-up, but it enhances your spelling instruction and decoding. So um, I found it really helpful. Okay, the last part of our phonics um, instruction that I want to share is that I have station activities for every single pattern as well. So, um, this is a more complex one. Y says I or E. So what students do is when we're studying that new pattern for the week, and it's usually tied to my spelling instruction, um, I will introduce the um, different stations we're going to do that week with that pattern. So in these different baggies, I have already prepped the activities students will do for that week. Um, I'm going to just show you. So in the cart, I might keep, you know, four or five sets, but then I might put these in um, a big box or one of my scrapbooking boxes like this. So what we do 
as I have a Sterilite drawer. It's like a five drawer. Um, so I could do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And each day of the week, there these activities are in there. So when it's time for, um, I call it the new words station, students have um, one of the activities from this. This is called um, the big phonics bundle. And you can just buy the individual patterns that only you need. I have them separated like these are the kinder ones. And then I have um, one by one. And then I have like... This is the first grade set or the mega bundle. So like you can just do all the patterns that you need. So this, um, the first, like this would be Monday. They have to use that new pattern sound, oi or oi. They have to decode the word on the card and they do it at the pocket chart. And then they have to find the right picture. So there's a lot of words to go through with those, um, with the oi, oi, oi and match the pictures. So that would be Monday. Then Tuesday, they have another activity in the second drawer and so on. So it keeps it really organized. And I just put each week in a baggie. And I use an Ikea big gray box to hold the entire year. And I just put when we're done, it goes in the back and the next one's in the front. So these again are called, um, well, the big phonics bundle, but each you would have to search each individual sound if you didn't want to buy the bundle. The bundle though is a seriously good deal compared to buying them all individually. If you were going to if you were going to go all out, then I would definitely go with the bundle for the best value. Okay. I'm going to pause and get myself together and we're going to talk about the lit kit next. The next section that we're going to talk about is the lit kit. I've kind of taken things out and set them down just to make it a little uh, go a little more smoothly. So, again, I like to find them. These are huge units that are going to give you a ton of stuff that you can use during your reading block to support any book, any program. It does not have to be um, certain mentor texts at all. These can be things that will support your phonics. They'll support your um, comprehension. They'll support any book that you are working through with any group. So um, I want to explain really kind of what's inside. It's broken into three main components. Um, this would be the October for first grade, but it's K, 1, 2, and 3 um, for the Lit Kit. Um, the first thing you'll find in the Lit Kit is your standards correlation <clears throat> and I actually have that laminated and sitting in the cart for that month I and mean, it's here but it's buried. Um, <clears throat> I have that both to Teaks and Common Core and then um, after the, the standards just correlation you'll find the ICANN posters that are going to go along with those standards and these can go on a focus wall or um, up on your whiteboard or whatever. This is a, an example of some of them for, I believe, I don't know if it's K1 or two. And then um, this is what the third grade looked like, a little more grown up um, and not as much of the cutesy clip art, but the standards are written out for students. After the I can section, you will find, so whatever standards we've chosen to focus on for that volume or that month, and these you can rearrange any way you like, um, the next section is going to be workstations or literacy stations that you can put out to practice those concepts. So I have mine baggied like this with any cards or materials in the bag, the instructions, and then the recording sheet. This is how I would, so I like to keep them and store them in baggies like this with, like I said, everything in there. I'll show you what some of the third grade look like. They look like this and the lit kit is printer friendly. So it's a lot of materials, but they're black and white. So you can easily run them. And if you want to use colored paper for like the student cards and things you can, but um, they're meant to be easy whether you have color or not, so it's both. So I'm going to show you a way to organize these centers, the baggies, um, besides just having them in Ziplocs, because 
I like to put them in Ziplocs for me, for storing, but when they're out, I want them to be a lot more accessible than that. So I'm gonna get up here and show you the, um, the way that I store them is in these scrapbooking boxes and you'll see there's you know so this is the august and september so it'd be the first set and i would just put the baggies and all the posters and things in the box and i have li these labels that you can download i have a color version and then i have this version which you can just run on colored paper so i have that for all nine kits um and that's how I would store them as the teacher. But as far as putting them out for station time, I like to use numbered buckets. So I got these at Michael's, but I usually get my buckets at the dollar store. I was just excited because Michael's had white. Um, so I put the cards and pieces that students need inside. And then it's easy for them <clears throat> to grab and go. They can take the bucket, however you want to set up your expectation. But I like to number them just because it, it helps me refer to get that bucket or, you know, get number two, get number one, <clears throat> excuse me. So um, that's how I like students to handle the materials. It's easy access, they can transport it. Um, and I typically put out five for a week, but we may do one over a couple of days or um, we may use them two weeks in a row. So it doesn't mean I'm doing a new one every single day. It just is how many I like to have out at a time. And that's just a personal preference. Uh, the lit kit will give you 10 different stations to use on those standards that, you, that you're covering. All right, so you get your ICANN statements, your stations, which are the baggy activities for your um, reading block. You also get teaching posters on those standards. So um, some of them might be phonics related, they might be more about story elements, um, but you're gonna get tons of teaching posters. These are great when you're doing a mini lesson um, you can either do it at the carpet area or you can do it under the document camera. So here's an example of third grade. So the different topics that you're covering in that particular lit kit for that month. Um, and these are great just as your teaching posters for reference, then you can have them up, but it's going to give you kind of that, that structure that you need. Um, so there are minimum of 10 but sometimes many more and then finally there are comprehension activities so i'm going to just flip to the back of this book here so fiction versus nonfiction, and again you can use these with any um, books that you want to read your favorites but in this section in the back here there are going to be what I like to call comprehension helpers. So um, worksheets that are going to go over those different skills that you've been um, working on. So because this is um, October, it has things like fire safety. So it's going to, the K1 and 2 lit kits are going to go along with themes that you would be using in the classroom. Third is a little more um, just strict content standards. Um, another fun thing in the K1 and 2 is we've got little story sticks for before, during, and after. So you would just run this on orange, put these little pumpkins on popsicle sticks, and then have a fun little comprehension activity. So they're packed. The light kit is packed with ways to make teaching reading and reading standards, ELA standards, easy for teacher and fun for students. So that is the lit kit. Oh, I almost forgot. The lit log um, is another part of the lit kit. Um, this is the third grade lit log. So it's gonna give you 10 different literacy notebook activities that again, support the, um, the learning going on. So whatever those standards are that you're focusing on, you're going to have 10 literacy notebook activities to go along with them. Here's an example of a younger grades one. So students would be placing the nouns and the verbs under the flap. You could certainly have them write, um, but 
10 different literacy notebook activities for each lit kit. Okay, we're gonna go to the next section of the cart. All right, the next section of the cart on the side here, I have vocabulary and I have examples of all sorts of vocabulary word wall type cards that you can use to enhance your instruction. You certainly don't need every subject area if you don't want it, but um, I don't remember always to incorporate quality, explicit vocabulary instruction unless I've taken the time to prep it and create it and everything. So this um, hopefully can help with that. So this would be um, my literacy standards, any vocabulary that we're going to be learning, and they're just in alphabetical order, <clears throat> and it helps me to find the words that I'm looking for when I need them. So after we learn a word, it can go up on a focus wall or a word wall. You certainly could keep it on a ring, um, whatever works for your classroom. And I have different sets. So these are my ELA words. This would be more of seasonal type words that are gonna go, like, so this would be January. So whatever would go, that I'd want my students to be exposed to that month. Um, and that's just, those are more fun, theme type words for um, enhancing their writing or exposing them to seasonal type words. We have science vocabulary, and I have, again, these are broken up into different grade levels but um, it just depends on what science concepts you're going to be covering, what you'll have in your different ring. So just like the other ones, you choose how you want to um, display those and where and how often. This is social studies. So um, again, they're in alphabetical order and it's gonna cover your different social studies strands that, oh, there, that one's a science. Um, maybe not, but anyway, it's gonna cover all of those different um, themes and topics that you're covering for that particular grade level. Ooh. And then math, I don't know that this needs to be on a literacy cart, but you know, vocabulary. So what I do is I do this during my math block, but I do this on Wordy Wednesday. So going over the different vocabulary words explicitly for my standards that I'm teaching. So I just wanted to show the vocabulary rings on the side before we get into the last tier down here, which is my writing mini lessons. I tend to do my writing mini lessons at the carpet with the easel, so I like having them near that area. Um, what I have done here is bind each month, so this is November, mini lessons, December, January. Um, I'll get out the September, I don't know why it's not in order. Well, goodness gracious, she's out of order, it does not surprise me. Okay, well... Once I locate September, what did I do? Oh, here she is. All right, so September, each mini lessons unit, these are K1 and 2. Um, I am hoping to get third out, but it's not um, started quite yet. So for each mini lesson, um, there are each unit, there are roughly eight mini um, lesson ideas. I know that doesn't seem like enough, but it, it's actually too many. So, because some of these mini lessons you're gonna be doing over a week, um, and, and many of them have some sort of art component tied to them, you can do it or cannot. Many of them have graphic organizers, which would be like day one, and then the day two, there's a template to help them make a rough draft, and so, a lot of these mini lessons are actually carrying over multiple days. So having eight of them is typically too many and you can choose which topics and themes and standards that you want to cover. These are also aligned to Common Core Antiques and you'll find the lesson plan with the, the standards alignment, the lesson plan and then any templates 
that you need after that. I'm going to actually show you this again. This is not how I would use this. This is simply for me to keep my materials straight, the little um, binding. But when it comes to the actual mini lessons paper and lessons, um, I have mine in an accordion folder and it's by month. So um, if I pull out my September mini lessons, they're here. And I'm gonna show you, for example, here is some from March. So I've got any visuals that we're gonna use at the pocket chart for discussion, any graphic organizers, the paper, the lessons. So again, these some there are some mini lessons that are just, we're practicing some element of um, what good writers do and we're, and it's a simple, just one day go for it. But then a lot of them are, um, going to take them through and we're doing organizing um, voice we're doing um, persuasive writing narrative writing all of the different standards throughout the months but what this does is it helps you not run out of fresh ideas and it keeps students motivated because the topics are very um, fun and thematic and you know if you want to rearrange the order of them you, you certainly can but they do tend to stick to that month. So, um, but I have very open-ended graphic organizers. So they're, they could be amazing, you know, above level authors and they could be struggling authors and the graphic organizers will help both ends and then everyone in between. So that is um, what I use for my mini lessons. That's my explicit writing instruction. So I'll do a writing mini lesson and then they will go have their um, writing, independent writing practice. But um, in the morning when I'm not doing just explicitly teaching writing on its own, but I'm actually having like a writing center during my station time, I do a different type of activity. I, um, they have their writing journal and that kind of free write, they, they have those type of activities there. But I also mix in um, explicit practice that I want them to do, and that's from engaging writing activities. So I have three volumes, and um, what it does is it gives you actual um, activities for them to do that are more center-like. So it gives some structure to that writing center. A lot of times it's just like, oh, go free write. Well, that's great, but every day it's hard for someone to free write and have quality writing. So this um, teaches them some kind of writing element, and then it allows them to practice that. And there's lots of templates and things. A lot of these you would do, you could do in a mini lesson. Um, this one is giving them different story settings, and then having them make a story that goes with that story setting. Um, and they're all different focuses, but they go along with our standards. And like, so during October, there's a fire safety um, center, community helpers. Um, and then it's um, helping students. What do you see? What do you hear? What do you feel? What do you smell? So I will put, after we've had those mini lessons and we've explicitly taught it, then it can be um, in the writing center. So. I like these because it adds a little more academic writing to my writing center. So again, my students need to be familiar with these concepts, but once they are, um, then these centers are great. So my opinion about, and then they choose a topic card, and then they use the opinion writing paper. I have a more supported version and then I have a less supported version. So again, I'm trying to think of different levels and the different standards that we're covering for Writing Center. Okay, I really think I've covered everything on the cart um, and the organization for all these um, drawers. I got them at Office Max a couple of years ago, but I'm sure that they're still out probably on Amazon as well. Um, this is another great way to store materials, especially if you like to do month by month or volume by volume. Um, 
So I just wanted to show that. I actually, it's empty right now, but um, it's cute and colorful and um, it's certainly an option if you're looking for different ways to store and you need space. I did have trouble fitting um, gallon size baggies. So it's better for organizing materials that are not quite as wide as the gallon size Ziploc. That was my only issue with this drawer set, so just putting it out there. All right, well, I hope you got some great ideas today, and I look forward to the next time when we can talk about another subject area.